3D printing has never been easier. The quality gets better by the year, it gets cheaper by the day. So today we're gonna compare some of my favorite classic miniatures from Game Workshop. Some damn fine minis. With some pretty amazing 3D printable alternatives from the interwebs. To see who is the most creative. Which one is the cheapest alternative. And more importantly, who did it best? Your mama. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Okay, Lucas, you know this, everyone else knows this, I'm kind of planning on starting a new army. Yeah. Which one, Emil? Uh, it's a new one every time, but I had the idea to start a modern Space Orc army, because my retro Space Orc army... It's all finished and done! No. Isn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. And I freaking love the Games Workshop minis, but I also love creativity and I feel like there is quite a lot really really cool 3D printable alternatives out there that isn't a direct copy that's like its own creative thing. So today we're gonna compare some of that shit. And guys, let's share some love to all of the sculptors we feature in this video. They've all agreed to be part of this video. And quite frankly, they're doing nothing wrong. So please be kind in the comments, give love. So we're gonna grade the miniatures we're checking out today in five different categories. Number one, creativity originality. Pretty important in my opinion. Number two, sculpting level. Number three, how much do they cost? And how much did it cost to print? Oh, that's important. Number four, and my favorite one, the paintability aspect. Yeah, because that's something Games Workshop is both amazing and terrible at, at the same time. Yeah. And lastly, have they overdone it with textures? Is there too much Yeah, because this is there? my biggest ick with 3D printing, you know? Yeah. And there is like these gritty textures yeah. everywhere. So Lucas, let's bring out the first one. <laughs> We've got the Freebooter Orc Lieutenant. So Lucas, what do you think about this one? First of all, I really like the slight scale increase. Yeah. It feels a bit more like, oh, this is a leader, this is the cool yeah. guy, you know? I think it's not supposed to be a direct copy from the flash gits, because uh, obviously this is the leader of the flash gits. I think it's more supposed to be like an old orc warboss maybe, yeah. and a freebooter. So having an alternative leader for the unit, I think it's pretty sweet. Yeah. So what do you think about the first grading, the creativity slash originality. I really like that he has a parrot up there. I yeah. kind of would have preferred a live parrot yes. uh, to kind of stand out from the mech parts. I really like the cigarette, pirate hat, freaking love it. Yeah. I think it's solid maybe like seven in my opinion. Yeah, so the thing for me is it's definitely creative. He's taken some liberties, made yeah. some few changes to like the classic Games Workshop aesthetic, yeah. but Make at the same on. time, it fits with the Warhammer. Yeah, so, definitely, uh, yeah. Sculpting level, I mean, I couldn't do this no. <laughs> Neither could I. I've seen a couple of Mesca X sculpts before. Some of his sculpts are like a 10. I think this one is more like an 8 maybe. I think we have more Mesca X coming up. We're so in terms of cost, it's $11. Comparing that to the flash kits that are 5 for 60. So uh, that's about $12 per mini. Yeah. Printing wise. I think it was 3 milliliters of resin. So it's about half a dollar a dollar. I would say the cost is quite fine. Maybe like an yeah. 8. Definitely. Yeah. And this is all considering you already have a 3D printer. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yes. Paintability, I would say this is probably a 9 for me. If the power claw would have been better designed, I would probably have given it a 10. Yeah. I think textures is where Meskite shines. It's like a yeah. 10 for me. Let's be generous. Let's yeah. say a 2. A 2. <laughs> Meskike, we're sorry. <laughs> so man, Meskike overall, freaking 42 points. Yeah. That's freaking solid out of 50. That's good. What a start. <laughs> Time for mini number two. Deathcoptas. So for some reason we've lost uh, <laughs> the rotors. The rotors for uh, oh. this one. Oh. On the other side, we have the Dark Gods. Bombayettes. This is honestly one of my, the cutest minis I know. Yeah, yeah. My, <laughs> mine is it's it. a bit small. Yeah, maybe we could have scaled it up a little bit. Creativity and originality, I feel like this is a freaking 10 for yeah, me. Yeah, this is pushing 10 it's for me. so fucking cute. Sculpting level, 
To me, I would split it up in two categories. Yes. Because the orc is maybe sculpted to a 6 for me. Yeah. And the flyer is like a 10. Because with the, the problem I have with the rider, we're, here we're going into the territory of just like pre-made textures. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, I've made uh, this brush that can make fur. And yeah. So so it looks a bit generic in some places. Yeah. I feel like overall, maybe a uh, 8. Yeah. Mixing the two together. What the fuck did this bad boy cost then? It's just $10. $10? Printing one of these is about $2. Yeah. So it's quite cheap. You would pay like for six of these, it's like 20 bucks. I think that's a freaking 10 in price for me. Yeah. Paintability. Again, really good. Yes, we have this same sort of row. split. The rider and the vehicle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The vehicle is really nice, it's just basic shape, yeah. so it's gonna be really fun to paint, I think. Yeah. But the rider, maybe more like towards like a seven or yeah. a six. Um, I think right now it kind of lands on an eight because the rider pulls down the, the yeah. flight ship, but uh, you cannot go wrong with this one. This is a freaking amazing yeah. mini. And uh, with textures, we kind of split. I would say it's an eight. Yeah, <clears throat> solid foundation. Yeah. Dude, 44 points total. That's so many it's points. It's so fr freaking high. And I can tell you that it's just gonna get more insane from here because the minis gets bigger and the quality gets Worse. even higher. You might ask, which printer is this stuff printed on? Well, you know, AML. Thanks for asking. We're actually sponsored by Frozen, and they've just come out with the brand spanking new Mega 8KS printer. If you've watched our channel for a bit, you know that we are massive fans of Frozen and used their printers long before we got sponsored to talk about them in this video. Since we switched to Frozen, not only do we get a much higher quality of the prints that can match the stuff that Games Workshop does, and all of the other high-end printers that costs you know, $10,000, but we also have a fraction of the problems with the printers that we used to have, meaning way less faulty prints. Just as an example, every single miniature printed in this video is done with the Frozen printers, and whenever we print a single one-off miniature, we use the small printers, the Frozen 8K Mini S, whenever we want to print something massive, like this motherfucker, <laughs> or maybe an entire army in a single build plate, we use their brand new Mega 8K S, which means that you have an 8K resolution on a massive, massive build plate. And right now you can get 12% off your entire purchase, which means any one of their printers on their website, if you follow our link down below the like button and enter the code SQUIDMAR at checkout, there's never been a better time to start printing and we can recommend these printers so much. Now let's get back to reviewing the meat. Now we have to bring out the freaking nest one. Nest one. <laughs> Scoped big shooter from uh, the Dark Gods Scraplands Herda. So do. What do you think about the creativity originality? So for me, and kind of why I wanted to include this one, it's because whenever you do an orc army, you maybe want to have a theme. So you want to have a, like a pirate theme, or yes. you want to have. Uh, beast Snagas theme, and if you then want to have a sniper and you don't have a sniper with Beast Snaga theme, then you freaking got it from a 3D printer. So in terms of creativity, <coughs> I think this is like a 10. You think it's 10? The face and uh, all of that kind of lacks a little bit of creativity, so I would give it maybe a 9. Sculpting level, again really high, it's been yeah. a really good level on these ones so far. Um, the fur is kind of funky. Yes, the fur is more like the I paint with a wash than yeah. the fur. The face is a little bit small. Yeah, so what I'm thinking is the problem here is that some of the details are too small. Like yeah. the tip of the teeth and the teeth in the face. But it's still really freaking high. I would yeah. say it's an 8 maybe. Yeah. Cost for this bad boy, it's $5. Mind blown. If you compare that to the Games Workshop, similar alternative, that would be from the Kill Team box. There is one guy called Scope Big Shooter, and that box costs $99, so you would have to spend $99 to get one out of 20 minis that you want. No bueno. No bueno. The the sad thing for me with a lot of these is that like a locked pose, yeah. that means that you can only pretty much have one in the army, Yeah. Uh, but I still think the price is a 10. But with that caveat, maybe this is the thing with the 3D printing. I've always thought that 3D printing, you can print a shit ton of minis. Yeah. But this is perfect for just printing one miniature. So paintability, this one is a little bit tougher to paint. Yes. A lot of it for me is the fur. Since I don't paint with washes and neither do you. Yeah. This is a 
fur that's really hard to paint like yeah. volumetrically. Yeah. So maybe a seven. Yeah. The textures on the other hand, again, the fur is the only thing bringing yeah. it down. Yeah. So I, I don't think we can give it less than an eight. So it's a freaking 42. I mean, these uh, bad it's boys are. For last yeah. <laughs> it's still 42 points. This is going well. Lucas, Orc Mega Boss in Mega Armor. And we're going to compare that bad boy to Meskikes, Meskob the Scrap Boss. <laughs> And the uh, first impression, you just printed this one and sent it to me today, and freaking wow, that's all I have to say. This mini is wow, wow, wee wow. Wow, 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 wow. Honestly, if these were both primed, yeah. I could not tell which one is a Games Workshop. Minute. No, I don't think so. It doesn't look like any other Warhammer mini. It feels like, oh, he hasn't copied this directly, but you still understand what you should play it as in Warhammer. Yeah. So it like feels totally unique, but it's still really, really usable in Warhammer. So for me, this is a 10 in creativity. Really freaking love the police hat, the old like Judas Priest hat. Yeah, the thing for me, I would uh, put it like as a nine. Yeah. Because it's like in terms of creativity, it's a really unique pose with cool weaponry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then the originality is what pulls it down. Maybe you are right. Maybe yeah. we should have revisited the other stuff now, but uh, <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> I think you're right. Maybe we have to push it down to like a nine. Yes. Or maybe even an eight. Maybe. But then he's gonna lose points compared to the other ones. I mean, well, it sucks this is to so be you, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sculpting level. This is a ten out of ten. Yeah, I think this is the best one so far. Meskai just nailed everything here. Yeah. Moving on. Costs. This one is the most expensive so far. It costs thirteen dollars yeah. fifty cents. So definitely not a ten out of ten. No, but also if we take into context that this bad boy from Games Workshop costs forty dollars. Yeah, and I could barely tell them apart. Yeah. Uh, definitely... So if you own a three D printer, I would still say it's like a nine out of ten. Yes. Because uh, it's one of those like centerpieces that you really want to have. And so. for this one, we're talking like five centiliters of resin. resin. Yeah. Paintability, I still think it's a it's a ten. It's the whole thing about details in the back. There's a lot of tiny finicky orc details yeah. in the back. I would not paint the back <laughs> <Me> neither. <laughs> but I still think it, it's a ten. Yes. The, everything yeah, is yeah, easy yeah. to reach. Good textures. There's no so. bad things like this. Yeah. textures. It's a freaking ten. Yeah. It's, this is a. Uh, so close to home run, but it's a 48 points total for this bad boy. And it's the highest like... point is 50, right? Yeah, so it's so close to getting a full score. Freaking let's go, Meskai! Gosh, Table he flip. set the bar yes. too high. Next Bring miniature. Bring out the next mini! <laughs> um, Ruk Truk Squig Buggy. So we're gonna compare the monster wheels from Bulwark. So Lucas, in terms of creativity, where do we land with this one? It's a tough one for me, because yeah. obviously this one isn't the same aesthetic as the Games Workshop one. No. It still has the orc theme yeah, going on. Yeah, so it would fit any orc army. Yeah, but it's more like towards the Mad Max sort of aesthetic, you yeah. know, with the bigger wheels. Which I actually, I really like that with this one. That's kind of my favorite part of it. But it doesn't feel quite as unique, maybe. No. Um, it feels kind of similar to, to the Games Workshop one. Yeah. So I would maybe put it at a 6, 7, 7 maybe? Yeah. In terms of sculpting level, again, we kind of have to split this up. Because I feel like the vehicle, for me, is a 10. Yeah. The orcs inside it is like a 6. They're a bit flat. Yeah. And Bulwark is kind of known for his vehicle. That's kind of where he shines. Yeah. And the really cool thing is, like, if you look at the sculpt, it actually yeah. looks like a car that would function in real yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. Like, you have all the parts. Mechanics yeah. underneath, yeah. <laughs> it's a tough one for me. I think I would put it at an 8, maybe. And the cost, this one costs 16 bucks. So we're slightly creeping. Yeah, it's creeping up in price, but this one did not require a lot of resin. Because it's, like, very thin parts. There's a lot yeah. of hollow like areas underneath it that doesn't require as much resin. It's pretty much only the tires. Yeah, the tires is soaks the resin. So it's slightly under $10 in terms of printing with the most expensive resin. The Games Workshop price is 60 for one. If you want to have four of them, all of a sudden you have four for $10 less than the Games Workshop alternative. Yeah. So what do we think about price with that? How do we grade something that's like more expensive, but if you print a couple of them and you're gonna want a couple of them? Yeah, that's the thing. I think as soon as you start printing your third or fourth one. Yeah, it's like eight, 10. Yeah, 
But if you don't, it's more like a 5-6, so maybe a 7-8. Yeah, I would I would probably put it at least at an 8 yeah. in terms of price. I can stand behind the 8. Paint ability. For me with this one, having glued it uh, together, yeah. it's really weird. Because uh, in order to get the hull to actually stay in place, yeah. you really need to glue it. Which makes it really difficult to paint yeah, I without mean, doing sub-assemblies. Yeah, of course you can do it sub-assemblies, but then you can't really have it on there to look at things. Yeah, so paint ability maybe a 7. Yeah. Uh, and in terms of textures i feel like this one has the perfect amount of textures it's yeah. not too much like the games workshop one if you look at like the back here with all the skulls and if you look at the size you have like rivets on freaking every single part yeah i would honestly yes, so yeah. overly detailed the games workshop one gets like a three yeah so i would probably overall give it an eight maybe but a boom so overall 38 <laughs> points I think uh, the score feels low on this one, considering how good it looks. Yeah. <laughs> Bring forth the next Bring finger. hence the fourth! Okay, so we're gonna compare this now to Gaskul Traka. And every everyone knows how big Gaskul Traka is. He's, he's not the biggest boss, but he's kind of big for being like a classic Warhammer Yeah, boss. he's a really big boss, but he's not huge, Emil. And I found two minis. I might have fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with the Bulwark Grand War Boss. And this one is kind of similar to Gashkod Traka. Yeah. A little bit different pose, looks a little bit different, a little bit less detailed. Yeah. This is the perfect compromise, because in yeah. terms of creativity, I think this one is like a 10. Because yeah. it has more of a comic book Oops, style. Yeah. yeah. So it's more, or maybe more cartoonish. Yeah. The and thing really that pulls like it, it down for me is that the armor is almost too similar to the Gashkod Track armor. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm a pirate loving boy, yeah. so I would still put it at maybe like a 7, but I wouldn't give it a 10. I would it give it sense. an 8, at okay, least. Okay, so maybe we meet in the middle and give it 7.5. <laughs> Are you okay with that? Yeah. yeah. But then we have the other one from Station Forge. I have no idea what went through your head <laughs> when you thought this is a Gashkul Fraka <laughs> proxy. So, it's, it's bigger than my head. It was like 10 times bigger than I thought it would be. I was thinking like, it's a pretty freaking awesome orc mega boss. <laughs> It is literally th four times the height, and this one is just uh, two centimeters bigger. But the I still feel like it's it's a lot of massive texture, so you could probably scale it down to like but the seventy percent. It maybe? was a pre-supported file, so ah. you couldn't scale it anything. But the creativity for me on this one is a ten. Yeah, because it's like a freaking winged mech. You know what? If you want to do like a orc-themed corn army or something, and oh. play it as like. Greater, Greater de Demon. Sculpting level on these bad boys. Uh, I feel like this one is as close to 9 as you can be, but I would still put it at an 8 maybe. It, it's uh, a bit flat. Yeah, it's a bit flat uh, and the face feels a little bit maybe too much like a kid's face. And what do we think about the sculpting on this one? For me it's the same thing, it's like the face pulls it down a bit. The face is a bit mediocre. Yeah. But the other stuff is so good. The face and the, maybe the wings pull it down a bit for me. Because yeah. they're rather thick. Yeah, maybe that's true, yeah. It should have um, been like naturally just scaled down like 20-30%. Yeah. And it would have been made more sense. Uh, but I still think the sculpting is an 8 on this one. It's pr yeah. probably quite equal. In terms of cost, this one is $16. This bad boy is $15. Um, in terms of resin printing cost, this one is more like six, seven dollars. This one costs like a full freaking resin bottle to 3D print. Yeah. It's like 80, 90 dollars to print. <laughs> Which is, with supports and everything, it's quite expensive. It's quite expensive. Uh, but again, you're getting a freaking, for under a hundred bucks, like a massive statue. Yeah, it's big enough to cover me in the frame. Yeah, which is, I mean, I, I cannot give this not an eight. 
Because it's like you pay the creator for the design just sixteen dollars. Yeah. The, the expensive thing is that we're using expensive resin. The thing with this one, it feels sort of like a display piece, not a miniature. Yeah, it feels like a statue almost. Yeah. Cost for this one, it's probably an eight as well. Yeah. Like uh, a I, bit I on the expensive SDL file uh, price. Yeah, but again, considering what it's replacing and kind of how good the quality is, yeah. I still think it's kind of an eight. Paintability. Um, this one, I feel like the face is like a 6 for me, the rest of the mini is like a 10, yeah. so I give it an 8. <laughs> yeah. This one, however, is I, I'm conflicted, because yeah. the wings are gonna be terrible to paint. Yeah, and you're gonna have to sculpt some stuff to fill in the gaps, because yeah. when you print that big, you're like, It's gonna work. Uh, it's, it's, you're gonna have like misfits and stuff. Yeah. But like the other, like the panels and everything is so good. How would you even hold it? Maybe we need to revisit the paintability because how the fuck would you even hold this to paint it? Yeah. There's no stability. Uh, maybe you're right. Maybe it's like a six. And the textures on this one, I think it's like a seven or maybe that like an eight. Means, yeah, I would say an eight. What do you feel about that one? <laughs> Again, it's like 50-50, like half of it is so freaking good. Yeah. The and thing then is, it's so much of it. The body is nice. Yeah. Maybe even that the textures on the panels are slightly pushing it. But since it's so big, it yeah. sort of makes up for it. Maybe like a 7, 8. Yeah. Let's, be, let's give him an 8. Let's be generous. So overall, the Bulwark Mini, 39.5. Which I think uh, it's a nice grade, man. And, and you, even when you saw this one, you were like, like maybe I'll paint this one instead of my yeah. Gashko Traka. So I think that's, that explains how good you thought this was. And this bad boy, so let's give it a 39, just for fuck's sake. I don't think I'd ever paint something that big. That's the guy who's painted World of Titans. Now it's the Morkenout versus the Rip Yaws. Brother, <laughs> when I saw this render of this one, I got so freaking hyped. Because yeah. it, it is so such a cool, unique miniature. In terms of creativity, I can't give it any less than a 10. No, uh, yeah, I, I totally agree. And the sculpting level of the metallic parts and uh, the mech bits is pretty, pretty damn fine. I feel like it's a bit over sculpted in, yeah. the, in, the, in the face and, and all of that. So maybe it's like an 8? Yeah, 7 or an 8, yeah. Costs $15. I feel like it's worth it. Like, I'm working out. It's $140. This one is 15. Yeah. Resin printing costs about $15 with the most expensive resin. It's so unique. It wouldn't look like anyone's orc army. No, no. no. <laughs> Maybe an eight. Maybe an eight, yeah, because you're still up there with like 30, yeah. almost 40 bucks. But printing. now I'm putting down the hammer on this one. Yeah. The paintability. Yeah. This is the first one for me where I'm like under five. Yeah. I, I would still give it a 5, because it's similar to a lot of Games Workshop stuff, but it has too much details. Yeah. I would probably never paint it because I'm a lazy fucker, Yeah. but I still love this mini so much. And in terms of textures... For me, the skin has too much going on. Yeah. No, I agree. It has too much spikes. It's got like too many small details that you have to paint. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's like a 7. I would put it with a 5. 5. Okay, let's, let's meet in the middle. I'll give it a 6. Which brings us to a total of... 37 points. That, that's uh, it's pretty low considering how cool it looks. Yeah, but it's still pretty high. It's above yeah. average. Which brings us to the last mini, Lucas. It's the Stompa. Can you bring me the classic original first? Because I want to see that bad boy. Dude, the original of this one. I don't know. There's something about it that I freaking love. Look at me, I'm Jay now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting so shit over the I'm screen. Getting... I actually wonder, Jay, why is your table so high? But it's it, huge. It is, it is, and it's cool. We also have this bad boy. Don't look him in the eyes. That that I I already did for my retro army. But then Station Forge freaking came in. Oh my god. With a mega step up. Turn on your mind again. What the hell? It's such a massive beast. I, I'm just baffled by it. Yeah. <laughs> So this is the one we're gonna grade today, and, and not this one, but I just thought it was a fun comparison to kind of show the different sizes. This one, creativity, I, it's such a unique stomp. Yeah. 
I feel like whenever people do like a stompa, they bring like a garbage can, put it upside down and put orc bits on top of it. But this one has something you maybe it's maybe it's even like an 11 in terms of creativity for um, a stompa. I mean, it's still just a big thing with a big cannon on top of it. <laughs> That's Keep, true. Hold your horses, man. Hold my horses. I would say a 10. It's really unique, and if you bring this one, paint it up, that's the coolest stompa on a tournament. Yeah. Uh, in terms of sculpting level, uh, I feel like there is a lot of details here that feels like they've taken a shortcut. Sculpted small and then just scaled up, which if you compare it to like the original stompa, it doesn't have that problem. It feels yeah. like all of the bits are made in scale. Because if you look at all of these small rivets and yeah. all the bolts and nuts, and then you compare them here, yeah. this is like the size of a hand for a fucking orc. Yeah. yeah. But the sculpting level is a little bit lower on this one. Yeah. But still, when you paint it, it's still gonna look really cool. I feel like it's more close to this one. Yeah, it's like so, a so retro it feels style. like old school. So still maybe like a seven and a half. Yeah, seven. Yeah. Let's give it a 7. <laughs> the cost for this, this bad boy. Yeah, it costs $15, the file, which is kind of neat, to be yeah. honest. I think we spent more than an entire bottle on this one. We spent uh, 1.3 bottles of resin for this. Print, yeah. yeah, so it's about $100, $120 somewhere total. Total cost for everything, $100, $120, which is... I mean, the original Stompa is $140. Yeah. So it kind of depends on, like... Do you think of this as just as high quality, a replacement where you just want to have the coolest orc army? Then I think it's straight in the middle, five, six. Yeah. But do you really want that specific, unique centerpiece? Yeah. Then it's still worth the money. Yeah. It's like fairly priced. Yeah. If you're looking to just get something cheaper than Games Workshop, then no. you're barking up the wrong tree. In terms of paintability, it's supposed to be a big monster. It's got to be difficult to paint, but this is a tough nut. Still maybe just a seven. Yeah. And then in terms of textures, this one is probably the least good one. Yeah, because for me, there's a big no-no. Yeah, there's textures in the face, there's texture on the skin, there's like uh, on texture the, on, the on, on all the metal. And maybe the biggest red flag on this one yeah. is that the textures don't really match. Because you have, in some areas, Mm -hmm. Super fine, oh, overly yeah, yeah, yeah. detailed, super neat parts. Yeah. And then you have the textures that are just massive and flat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's probably a four in yes. terms of textures. Uh, again, I feel almost a bit sad that this one is getting a lower grade because I, I freaking love it so much. But we gotta be honest. Yeah. It looks so menacing and, yeah, and amazing. terrifying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's this is the perfect army miniature. Yeah, I think it's perfect for people that use washes. And this bad boy, Lucas, despite being the coolest one we printed, it only gets 34 points. So in conclusion, 3D printing, freaking awesome. Uh, it takes a lot of time. It's not always cheaper, especially no. considering the, uh, the printer cost, but uh, it's such an amazing tool to get unique minis for your army and I'm kind of happy about it. Is it here to replace Games Workshop? No. No. But still some cool alternatives. So I guess thanks for watching the video. And especially thanks to all these amazing Patreons. And freaking Frozen for sending us the resin and the printer. Yeah. Uh, Otherwise we couldn't have yeah. printed this. <laughs> have a good day everyone. Yes, Bye -bye. Let us know about the table.